I want to introduce Barbara Gayden, um, who's from the St. Louis area, who's been very involved ever since um, Michael Brown's killing in protesting down there. I'm actually in Washington, D.C., seeing friends and uh, avoiding the, uh, the flooding in my state. Um, and I, I have to say, I'm, I'm grieving, I'm angry. But I, I also have to say, if it were not for the last year and a half, I don't know if I would be feeling much of anything. People living in St. Louis, as I have, have gotten a quick education over the past year and a half. We've learned more than we really want to about grand juries and county prosecutors and hijacked processes and the rotten system that enables police to lie. And um, this is white St. Louis. Um, has learned this, a world that black American, black St. Louis certainly knows backwards and forwards, people of color. And if it weren't for this past year and a half, if it weren't for the people of color who've come into my life and white activists through Black Lives Matter, I would only live in this other white America. And in Washington, D.C., I have to say, in white America, everything looks fine. It just looks fine. People are out in the mall having a good time. So were we. White America has always felt like a complete world to me. I would never have known anything was missing. It's a world where everybody accepts that police have difficult jobs. Accidents happen. Nothing's anybody's fault. Tragedies happen, but, you know, things are pretty fair. And I, I, I hang out in this world 90, 95% of the time. And everything in this world is just fine. And so it feels strange, um, but I am grateful to be now part of this other world where things are not fine, where there is a huge hole, there, there is this raw abiding question of when. When is something going to happen? When is justice going to happen? When, if not for Tamir, then where? Who? Um, I remember this was the last year. Early on, I was invited to be part of a, of a, a rally at a, a Black Amy church in, in um, downtown St. Louis. And they invited some women who lived in the Canfield apartments to talk about what it was like to live there. They miraculously managed to get out of their apartment. Um, they were being barricaded in, not allowed to go to work. Things were pretty awful there. And people, one woman was talking about how someone in around her had been, had been uh, thrown to the ground and she reached down and she tried to help this person to get up and she was yelled at by the police, stop, don't pick that guy up or I will shoot you. And I remember it just not being able to understand that, how that could be. And so I came into the work the next day and I, I talked to um, our admin assistant, uh, Missy Stanfield. Missy's African-American. And I remember saying, Missy, why aren't black people? And I could just see her flinch, you know, like, oh, my God, what is my boss going to ask me here? You know, what's she going to say? And I said, Missy, why aren't black people just angry all the time? I still want to know this. I still want to know. Um, and she was amazingly kind and just showed me the grace that I have seen people have and, you know, not have and be hurting and in pain and all over the place. But I still want to know how anybody now who gets part of this world cannot be angry all the time because you can't, you can't live that way. Um, that you have to be angry at some point. You have to be angry enough to do something. Um, to say, I, um, I'm grateful for all of this. It sounds terrible to say, but I'm grateful because otherwise nothing, unless more people, more people who look like me um, can join with the people of color and actually feel this horrible pain, 
I don't know how anything is going to happen. It sounds terrible, but I really do think that is our hope um, that more people could feel something. Um, I remember a number of years ago, I was talking to, uh, this, was, this was a long time ago, this is when Matthew Shepard was killed. And um, a friend of mine, gay man, Alex Richardson, colleague, uh, I said to him, how many black men, or how many gay men, excuse me, how many gay men have been killed uh, for being gay over the years? And he said, thousands, millions. And I said, how many people knew or cared about them? And he said, no one, no one. And to me, that is the hope that more people know and more people care.